Hi, I'm Rob Cram, and today we're going to take a look at the Far Cry 3 map editor. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail as to what you can and cannot do. I'm just going to give a basic overview of some of the features on offer. Now, there are a few repeated items from Far Cry 2, but the basic premise is the same, but adds a lot more to the mix as well. So if we go to the toolbox, you can see you've got various options to raise and lower the terrain. If you hold the right thumbstick, sorry, the right trigger, you will then create a continuous moulding of the terrain. So that's quite easy. You can change the size of the um, cursor to give you a bit more range or to make more intricate changes. And then basically you can flatten very easily. Or if you do make an error, you can just click undo, which um, reverts the last change that you made. So there is a more general raise lower tool for creating larger mountainous type structures or formations. So what we're going to do here now is um, that's kind of like the basics for any editor smoothing them out, making a terrain higher or lower but you then we've got more options as well if we sort of go into the texture option we can now then select various palettes and we'll use coastal grass and we just paint over that to give it a bit more coloring so we're doing this really quickly, you know, you could spend quite a bit of time getting various textures on that particular piece of the um, island and sort of mixing it up a bit and doing really kind of detailed stuff with that. So but that's just a basic idea that you can just paint the surfaces to suit Not sure that that's particularly right for that type of terrain, but that's just giving you an idea. So we can do things as well with the environment in terms of we can then change the time of day. And then we can add different clouds in the sky. Not that players will be looking at the sky very often. But it's nice to be able to change that. Then obviously a feature from Far Cry 2 returns where you can change the amount of weather conditions. So those options remain. I think what's probably the best part of the map editing is the fact that you've got a huge amount of items that you can add to your map props. So here we're looking at a load of different tree varieties and shrubbery. As you can see, not all of them are tropical. So there's no sort of method to this particular map. I'm just placing items to show you. There's a bit more of a tropical tree to add a bit of color to that sandy beach. And you've got a whole load of 
plants as well. So you can really sort of create your own paradise with just the basics of terrain deformation and also adding loads of plants and such like. And as you can see, there's just a huge amount of variety here. From different types of rock, from jungle, grassland, coastal. All of their own kind of flavour. And you can actually search for specific items as well. If you're looking for something specific, which is quite useful. The waterfalls are actually quite an interesting addition here. They range from very insignificant offerings to huge gushing elements. But what this does actually highlight is that you really do need to put it in context of the map. There's no point just shoving that waterfall in the middle of the map and hoping for the best. It's got to look right and with the amount of props you can place into the map you can sort of build things around that so that it fits in. So it's quite intricate in how you can add those kind of items. I mean even as far down as beds and chairs, lighting for interior locations, there's a lot. So we have a look at the buildings and again you've got a whole range of items that you can add. Some from Far Cry 2 and some new ones as well thrown in for good measure. And you do have to really look at the building and where you're placing it so that it does fit with the terrain. Otherwise you can, when you test the map, you can look underneath and see inside the building and it's kind of erroneous. You don't want that happening. So you've really got to look at all angles to see how it's looking on your map before placing it. So there's a kind of semblance of reality. And as you can see, these are all themed. Got some old ancient structures you can put in and of course you can rotate them around to suit where you want them to be in relation to your terrain. So that kind of gives you an idea of some of the stuff you can put in. Even a huge airport if you choose. Obviously the uh, terrain has got to suit such a large structure being added, but it gives you an idea. So there are more other props as well. So we're going to add a sunken ship or two. Maybe a, a crashed plane. You've got to again zoom in to make sure that that fits in with your terrain. So you want it slightly in the sand. I mean, some objects are quite difficult to place. This tail, for example, is very hard to actually make it look right with the um, map rather than just sticking out of the ground. So that gives you an idea of some of the props that you can add to your map. We had a look at some of the foliage you can add. We've looked at changing the terrain and the lighting. But there's more stuff that you can add as well. You can add, obviously, vehicles, weapons, but you can add also AI components as well. So we'll look at hostile mercenaries. There's a whole heap of different.
So we'll stick them all in the, on the sandy beach. Remember, these are hostile. And there's different outfits that they can wear, as you can see. So we'll have four different mercenaries on the beach there. So they're hostile. We can then have allied mercenaries. We'll put them on the other side of the map. Now what's interesting now is that you can then add wildlife. So we'll start with the aquatic wildlife and for anyone venturing into the wet waters here might be in for a bit of a surprise when they come face to face with a man eating shark. So a few sharks to contend with if you venture into the waters. Now what's interesting about the AI animals is that things like tigers, alligators are designed to indiscriminately attack whoever comes into their domain, whether that's friend or foe. So it's an interesting mechanic adding them into your maps and seeing the result of people having to fend off opponents but also these creatures who will actually attack these AI characters as well and vice versa. So you could really fill out your maps with all these kind of wildlife just to add a bit more atmosphere. Obviously you can't fill your entire map with tons of AI creatures. You're limited in how many you can add, but for now we've added quite a few different creatures. You know, a few dogs as well running along the beach in a convoy. And there you can see we've kind of peaked out on the amount of props we can or AIs we can add to this map. So as you can see just looking at this overview there's a ton of creatures and AI people in this map. So if you wanted to actually now make this a, a proper map for an actual team deathmatch game or whatever you would then need to make sure that you've got things like spawn points added and uh, weapons so you need to then put those all into place before it'll accept the map as an actual playable map. So we're going to now just jump straight into the test map. We'll probably get killed straight away and we can see our handiwork. So here are the buildings. You can see it's joined nicely. The rocks. You can hear gunfire in the background. Dogs barking. So the animals are actually attacking. As you can see here they're attacking the AI. And as you can see here, as I was saying, you have to really make sure that the props that you put into the map actually fit your terrain. Otherwise you'll have bits like that that stick out. So you really got to take the time to make sure that your bits are in there properly. And here we come to the allied. Nope, the allies were the ones being attacked by the tigers. So that basically gives you an idea of the Far Cry 3 map editor and uh, there's a lot more you can do. I've just really touched the surface but that's just a basic overview. Okay, I'm Rob Cram. Thanks for watching.